Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. And I'm Bob, how are you? Uh, welcome to our 2023 Twin Tip Ski Comparison. Yeah, some crossover here with some other stuff we've done. But yep. Nice to see them back in the fold in a different application. Yeah, it's been I think like three years since we've actually done a specific Twin Tip Comparison. I wasn't sure if we would get to it, um, and we really saw a lot of comments asking yep. us to do a Twin Tip Comparison. Um, and I, having a terrain park freestyle background, really tried to focus it more on freestyle park twin tips. Right. Um, partly because with all the other comparisons, like a lot of those twin tip skis get put in there anyways. Yeah. Like I'm kind of thinking specifically like the mid 100 free ride ski comparison. There's a lot of twin tip skis in there. Right. And then a lot of the things like over on that side of the wall, especially as we get to the end there, We've talked about them before, but we, we thought we would include them as well. Right, even these two right in the middle. I mean, they were in, you know, the mid-90s all-mountain comparison. Yep. So it just kind of shows the range of the genre as a whole, which I think is really nice. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I think this will be really fun. Uh, I'm looking at a bunch of different stuff. Uh, and we just got these sweatshirts in. I don't think they're quite on the website yet, but they will be available for purchase. It's a great, great little hoodie. Yeah, nice little thin, yep. like, you know, tech hoodie. I don't imagine they'll be particularly expensive. Seems to be the style the, these days. The yeah. Kids. The kids like those types of things. Kids and, like, fly fishermen, right? Right. <laughs> I don't know. You see a lot of them. I have a bunch of them now, and I like them. Um, so we'll, we'll get right into it. We are going to go uh, least expensive to most expensive. Um, and these two that we're going to start with are... I suppose a little bit different in the sense that they come with bindings, but yep. I think it still works this way. Yeah, for so, sure. Bob, I think you're going to start us off here with the K2 Revolt 92. I will not. I will start off with the K2 Reckoner 92, which is gosh, a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. But yeah, this is, you know, the basically the value version of the Reckoner line. So at 92, it's a different build than the 102 and then up from that, uh, but really keeps a lot of the same style in mind. And especially in terms of flex. I mean, Jeff and I went through yeah. the line flexing all these skis and uh, this was a clear standout in terms of it being approachable, easy to flex. Great for aspiring skiers, whether you're freestyle or all mountain. Uh, the value of this thing is great. Three ninety nine ninety five with bindings. Yeah. Um, we have this and the next one, I believe, as a package together on our site. So if you're looking for even more value, you get the boots and poles along with it. So it's a pretty cool way to kind of get into freestyle skiing if you're looking for it, to do it in, you know, in, in a budget type of manner. Um, you know, this ski has some other fun stuff too. It's, I mean, it's all K2. It's got that Aspen veneer wood core, has the triaxial fiberglass braiding. Uh, I would say this is a glimmer of a sidewall underfoot, but mostly it's capped. So having that little bit of vertical sidewall underfoot does help uh, get a little bit of grip there, but for the most part, it's cap. Uh, that's kind of what you'll see with the, you know, especially the lower budget skis, lower value. It's just a cheaper way to build them. It does help with durability and quickness as well, um, but really just a good option for emerging skiers if you're looking to be in the park or not. But pretty good rocker, pretty good splay in the tip there, nice camber underfoot, and then pretty, pretty symmetrical in the tail. You know, it's not a symmetrical ski, but still nice splay, good rocker, really playful. Uh, just a great option. You know, in a wide range of sizes, too. Uh, we can say that for these first two skis. Yep. Um, that they are kind of filling that tweener zone of having uh, the K the Dina Star especially starts at a 130. I forget where this one starts, but, um, you know, it's 149. I got a little cheat oh, sheet nice. back here. So, yeah, 149 to 179. Yeah, it's uh, a big range there. Big range of skiers uh, and just a great overall ski, you know, nice and composed and good value. Yeah. I was pretty excited when they announced this ski. Yeah. And it wasn't quite what I thought it was going to I be. I was hoping for the 102, but in the 92. Me too. Yeah. Um, but I think it makes a lot more sense that they did it this way. Yeah. Because then you're hitting that just crazy impressive price point yeah. with a binding. And I like that you kind of commented on like it still has the same like 
theme. Right. It's like relatively soft flexing. It's got tip and tail rocker. It's really playful and fun. Uh, you don't get the carbon spectral braid. Right. But there's still a reasonable amount of technology in this ski, I would say. Yeah, and and for a lot of skiers, you know, a lot of people out there, whether they're in a youth program or just looking for a nice, fun, fun-loving all-mountain ski. Yeah, you, you know? see a lot of these, um, a lot of them at Stowe. Yep. Or similar skis like the Menace that we're going to look at momentarily. Um, and yeah, it's really nice because it's it's a budget-friendly ski. So if you're putting a tweener or a teenager on it and they maybe don't take great care of their equipment, yeah. you don't have to worry too much yep. about them destroying a really expensive ski. Um, a lot of the kids I coach, you know, when they kind of enter into our program, they'll start on stuff like this. Yep. Very, very appropriate. It's really only when you start doing pretty... Uh, pretty aggressive um, high level things in the terrain park where you kind of, I would say the biggest limitation of a ski like that is is perhaps the system binding. Right, so a marker M10, you know, tendon binding right. on the track. It's more of the track. Yeah. Yep. Um, and that, that comes up every once in a while is like, you know, might be easier once you get to that certain level where you're like spinning on and off rails, right. having that low center of gravity is yep. nice. But that's pretty much the only drawback right aside from that they're awesome skis um, and then this Dina star menace 90 here um, is overall very very similar so pretty simple ski here wood core you know fiberglass very simple build cap construction this ski we don't really get any vertical sidewall underfoot but that's fine um, I would say the big difference between the reckoner Reckoner 92, I got it right that time. <laughs> and this Menace 90 <clears throat> is both the binding. So this is an 11 din binding. Yep. A little bit stronger heel piece here too. So maybe slightly better for a heavier or more aggressive skier. And you also get a stiffer flex pattern here. So kind of different. I would say it boosts its ability as an all-mountain ski yep. because you get a little bit more longitudinal stability through the ski so if you're skiing kind of fast but it's not quite as playful right so kind of a give or take there whether you know just pick which one kind of matches your skiing style better um, and 479.95 here with the bindings with the binding yep. yeah so still a great price including binding and you know we're jumping up what eighty dollars right. from the from the reckoner but great ski a lot to like here tremendous value yeah, and I would say a little bit less in common with Menace and its wider counterpart here, M Free, than Reckoner. So this yeah, is a, Menace, a slightly different. They really feel different. different. Yeah. I mean, even if you like talked about the Menace ninety eight, right. which doesn't exist anymore, but that ski compared to the M Free ninety nine yeah. over there, they had very different feel. Yeah. Um, the Menace felt more like that Black, Black Ops 98. Ops, right. In fact, they almost like shared the same build and, and yeah. overall design. So it kind of makes sense. And, you know, we're really only seeing the Menace name carry over in this ski as well as the Menace 80. Right. Which is a similar story, um, just a little bit narrower. So that's always an option too. But great range in lengths, 130 to 180 breaking on the 10. Yeah. So like... No, exactly. There's just a whole lot of skiers that would find themselves situated properly on that Menace 90, for right. sure. Like a 12-year-old a could ski it, yep. and I could ski it, right? which is a huge, yep. huge range. Yeah, I think that's, and that's why they're so popular. You know, they're just, they're, right. e they're e it's an easy buy, right? which I think is cool. So moving into flat skis here, Bob. Yeah, we got a flat ski. This is a Head Oblivion 79. Uh, bumping up a little bit in terms of overall build quality and just general feel. I mean, this in your hand is... You can tell it's a, there's a little more here. Yeah, a little bit more substantial of a ski. We are still in that cap construction. I think whenever we're getting into still in that tweener range, having that cap build is just nice for durability. It is a little bit quicker. You know, the cap keeps everything in a cohesive unit. Yeah. Um, so there's just kind of less delay, I guess. Um, but having that cap in there really just adds to the overall quickness and just the longevity of the ski. I think that's the big thing. Yeah. You know, kids are prone to just hitting, like their skis just hit each other right. all the time. Like, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing? But they don't know. And <laughs> if, yeah, and if you go up to like this vertical sidewall in the 94 Correct. or the 84, it's just going to hit into that into the meat of the ski a lot sooner. So having that protective 
uh, top sheet there is really nice. Uh, pretty cool with this thing on the scale, 1,855 grams. That shows it's a real ski. What is this thing, a 172? So, you know, even at 79 underfoot and a 172, we're like pretty heavy. You yeah, know, and we and that's kind of too. reflected in the flex where I was impressed by how stiff it is. Yeah, and I would say that this is a good option for someone who's entering competitive park skiing. Like this 100%. is definitely more of that true traditional twin tip shape. And um, the width, the width feels right. like kind of like firm snow specific. Like seventy nine hundred foot's going to start to get kind of bogged down in, in right. softer snow, so it really does feel like a park focused ski. And just a crazy amount of camber. We've talked about yeah. this with the 84 version of this ski as well, where you're just seeing that amazing positive camber. You know, they call it park and pipe specific rocker. I'm not seeing much of it. I think that that is, for all intents and purposes, a fully cambered ski yeah. and a really good one. You know, they're building that energy into it along with the stiffness, and you're going to get a ton of rebound. You know, I think if you're in the park and you're looking for that energy off the jumps, that's going to get you into it in a pretty good, pretty good value. Three forty nine for that ski. So, you know, you're you're bumping up a little bit in flat ski price, but you're getting the performance to match. Totally. Um, and then these next three skis, they all hit the same price point. We're jumping up fifty dollars. Uh, and starting here is the. Now we have a Vocal Revolt 86. <laughs> not a Vocal Reckoner? No, not a Vocal Reckoner. I thought about throwing a curveball to you. Um, but I really feel like starting with that Oblivion and kind of going through the other Oblivion, and I guess you could go further too, but the prices change when we get up here. Um, these are all really, really good skis for somebody who is pretty serious about park. Yeah, um, especially a younger skier who's pretty serious about park because we're still we're just at a three ninety nine ninety nine price point here, so it's still an affordable ski. But like, this ski just got first at the the first World Cup Big Air. It was either first or second. I can't remember exactly. But like, this actual ski is right. getting World Cup podiums. So. Like, you could make an argument that you don't really need more than this. This can take you from beginner park skier to World Cup podium finisher. Right. Anyone who's arguing that there's a, that there's a performance limit on this right. is not winning World Cups. Exactly. <laughs> um, something that's interesting about this ski, and we'll see more and more of this as we kind of go through, especially into, like, the middle swath of skis here, is this does have a more directional shape. So... 120, 86, 110. The recommended mount point is still dead true center. So it is still specifically designed as a park ski. Um, it's just, it has a directional shape. So there's a difference between the tip and tail width. Some skiers just like that. Yep. Some skiers don't. It's really personal preference when we're really talking about park skis here. I will say that kind of the benefit of this more directional shape is it is better when you're just kind of cruising around the mountain, at least when you're skiing forward and cruising around the mountain. So you get kind of some bonus all mountain performance um, and great flex pattern in this ski, you know, nice and round. It's, it's, I wouldn't call it soft or stiff. Yeah. You know, maybe on the softer side of the overall spectrum of ski widths, but among these skis, it's kind of right in the middle. So just gives you a nice, even mix of park performance characteristics so quick on rails you can do butters and presses and ollies yep. and that kind of stuff but it's still got enough to it that you can land a world cup scaffolding big air jump right so pretty cool pretty cool ski here and then chiming in on the all mountain aspect i remember i i think it was back in 2019 or the 2020 ski test where this was the uh, bash 86 back then yep. And myself and Marcus, another employee here, who's I think three inches taller than I am, we were both skiing this, this and the Soul Rider 87 back to back. And we were both super impressed with how agile and quick it was just skiing on a groomer. Yeah, things are great. They're just, they're great all mountain skis, good grip. I mean, that's a vocal heritage right there. Yep. Um, but, you know, it was kind of one of those things where it really made me try to decide if I wanted to get one of these for myself or, or the Nordica. 
Uh, the fact that this tops out at a 180 kind of took it off the table for me, but still impressive at how well it performed. Very light. 16.04? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see some, and, I, and I, I almost forgot to put it on the scale, but as we go through here, we're going to see some, some changes yeah. in weight, and I think that's at least one of the more important determining factors if you're choosing among these skis. So that is a shorter length there. What do you got there? 164, um, but still, yeah. it is a lighter ski, light swing weight, going to be nice and quick. And interesting, you know, when we're talking about swing weight, that that does affect how a ski feels on your feet, whether it's 100%. that Revolt or this one or some of these others that have that half cap construction uh, makes it lighter in the tips and tails. Uh, this is not one of those skis. No, this ski is pretty like burly. Yeah, this is a K2 site, 88 millimeters underfoot. Uh, you're just uh, under 1800 grams there, yeah. so right about with the head in terms of weight. Um, just like that Reckoner, we still have full K2 construction here. You know, it's got that Aspen wood core, that triaxial fiberglass braiding. You get some L carbon stringers in there too. In this one here. Oh yeah. And then you get that just that thicker overall profile, which just leads to more durability. Um, I think the big thing about this one is really that true twin tip splay, and you know, I, I think this echoes a lot what we said about the about the Oblivion 79, is like that is what I consider to be a true to the traditional twin tip shape. Yep. Like just camber to the end and then a, a second twit, a second tip. You know, like that's all, it, that's all it is. It's very, very similar to what we're seeing in the front of the ski. Little yep. bit of rocker in there, a little bit more than what we saw in the head, but still that nice positive camber underfoot. Uh, full vertical sidewall all the way around, full edge. Uh, you know, from my mind, I would say this is one of the most durable and trustworthy skis uh, at this level on this wall. So Jeff was saying 399 uh, on this one. So it's really easy to say, wow, you're getting great value and durability for that price. Like if I had a teenager that was rough on his or her skis, yep, this would be a great option. Yeah. No, and a, a ton of the kids I coach have found a lot of success with the k2 yeah. site yeah um, a lot of them that's the ski that they've landed on and a lot of them like i had a couple kids over the course of last season who broke like four or five pairs of skis and then ultimately they either landed on a site or a poacher yeah. and stopped breaking skis yeah and i think there's there's a lot to be said about that and i do think it's reflected in the weight both of those skis are on the heavier side of the spectrum if you're comparing them to similar width skis and stuff like that. But, like, it, I think that's a reasonable sacrifice. If yeah. You don't have to, like, replace your skis a bunch of times throughout the season. No, and if you can deal with a little bit of extra weight, then, right. then fine. You know, it's really all about that triaxial fiberglass braiding system, which yeah. is just super cool. I've also seen it where, like, a younger skier like that will move from a lighter ski to something like this and the first couple days for them can be challenging as they like adapt to the heavier weight but it like ultimately eventually turns them into a better skier yeah like stronger skier they're more more direct with their movements more like purposeful i suppose yeah um, instead of on a lighter ski where you can kind of just like you can get away with not being strong and not being deliberate. Yeah. Um, so or mistakes, you know, getting away totally, with mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that I I like pointing out about the site, and we'll talk about this with other skis up here, is it's kind of got more of a modern park shape. So a little bit more tip and tail rocker. And then like it's pretty subtle, but there's a little bit of early taper up yeah, here. Yeah, I would, you know, when you just held it up, it definitely kind of looked more like that Revolt 90. 100%, which is another, I mean, that's a brand new design. Yeah. Um, and basically any time that you see that hip shape, you know, the same is true with anything, with powder skis or all mountain skis, but if you have more early taper and more rocker, it's going to be quicker and more agile. Yeah. And what happens with these skis is they also become a lot easier for like nose butters and tail butters because the ski is less catchy. Yeah. And we'll see that exaggerated on Phil Casabon's Pro model, yeah. which makes sense because he does a lot of that stuff. So 
if you're a park skier and you're choosing among this stuff, just kind of think about the way that you ski. Like, do you like doing all the like new kind of swervy, pressy, manual wheelie things? This kind of shape might be better for you. Or are you more precise? Are you like trying to compete? Are you right. are you working on your switch seven mute grab or something? Some of these skis with more extended side cuts may be better because they're a little bit more responsive. Yeah. So kind of a, a broad question there or broad theory, but I think an important one for people to, to talk about. Right. Um, and then the next ski up here is the line honey badger so like i said these three skis they all hit that 399 price point ton of value um, this honey badger almost feels like a mix of these first two skis uh, the shape you know we we're just talking about shape we have not quite as much extended side cut as we're seeing in that revolt 86 um, just over 1600 grams in this what length do we have here Got to be 172. Yeah, I was gonna say just over 170. Um, the thing about the Honey Badger that kind of stands out in this category is its quickness. Yeah. This ski has always been known for being very, very quick and responsive. You know, you see the light weight, so on your feet, it's going to feel very light. You get a nice, soft flex pattern yeah, too. Yeah, it's very flexible. It's in very flexible. Maybe the softest ski that we've looked at so far, but. You know, K2 and Line, in a lot of ways, are kind of the same company now. Right. At least they're under the same umbrella. So a lot of that durability that K2 is able to build into their skis, we see it in these lines too. I, I would say that the site is going to be a little bit more durable, but it's heavier. Right. So that's kind of where, where the trade-off is. But this one's a cap. Yep. So there's like, less chipping. Yeah, there's just a couple of different factors to consider. Yep. Um, but the Honey Badger has become a really popular ski, great park ski, 90 underfoot, handle some softer snow, 92 underfoot, sorry, knew it was a little wider. So great ski here. Yep. Quick, agile, soft, playful, but also pretty durable too. Yeah, and I liked what you said <laughs> about the K2 is having that modern freestyle shape, and I think that this fits into that. Yep. into that category as well and just having that nice flexible shovel i mean really great for for your groundwork yeah which I think and is just really like fun. It, i mean i really like these skis these twin tip skis in this 399 range yep because like you'll see professional skiers on a honey badger and then you'll see like a 13 year old kid who's never skied park in their life on a honey badger right and it's just cool <laughs> that like it can work for such a wide spectrum like that and that 13 year old who's brand new to park, they can go and watch some ski movies or, or watch some Instagram edits and they'll see like their superheroes on the same ski. Right. So no, I, I grew up liking that <laughs> yeah. stuff and, and I still really. No, I think that carries through for sure. That, so. I don't think that has been lost on the youth of today. Yeah. So. And bumping up a little bit in price and construction as well, uh, this head Oblivion 84. So similar to what we see with the 79, we are getting more of that traditional shape, uh, really kind of that multi-directional use, very symmetrical in nature, not totally, is this one totally symmetrical? I no. Forget. No, 120, 84, 109. Um, but the, that display is pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, so kind of a blend of that site in terms of its, you know, full sidewall, really durable, kind of a, a beefier ski here. Yeah, you can feel it in your yeah. hand. Yeah. Definitely has that capability to it for sure. Um, 1,850 grams here in the 176. You know, definitely has an even flex as well. Not too heavy, you know, I mean, sorry, not too stiff, not too soft. Really in that middle, middle range of flex patterns and great energy, good grip. Uh, like we saw in that 79, I, you know, I just, I can't call this thing rockered really a no. little bit, you know, maybe a millimeter. You just, if you feel all the camber though, when you're seeing yeah. it. So really nice positive camber underfoot, just like that 79 building the energy into the ski. Um, and then, yeah, that tail shape, you know, just very, very nice and round, not crazy, like smooth, but 
stops there and then turns up. So that's kind of that true traditional twin tip in this 84 uh, and just a really well built ski, you know, kind of what we talked about with this 94 and then most other times that we talk about head skis, we're talking about their build quality and it's great to see that filter into their twin tips. Uh, and these are just a really kind of a traditionally constructed and shaped ski for having that park performance and just a great choice and an awesome addition to this wall. I think we were both pretty psyched to see these come out. Was it two last year or two years ago? I think two years ago now. Yeah. Um, but awesome to see this thing, you know, at 84, definitely more of that, uh, competition width ski. Um, so, you know, you do see the, these in upper level events, which is great, but really nice, well-rounded option. Yeah, no, definitely like competition vibe. Yeah. I get from the Oblivion 84 for yeah. sure. Um, you know, very similar to when we were back here and I was kind of talking about like the precise shapes versus yeah. the loose shapes. That one definitely fits into the precise category. Yeah. And just every time I ski that ski, I, I am reminded and impressed by how much bounce and pop it has. Yeah, well, I mean, it's that thick, that thicker profile. Totally. That full sidewall all around, just like we saw and on the like site. And like just a, a snappy, yep. bouncy flex pattern. No, it's like a super high quality ski for $449. Totally. Like, I think the quality of that is, is, is a bargain. Generally, people don't care about this stuff with park skis, but they carve really well. <laughs> Like, but there, but like carving into the jumps is becoming so much more important totally. these days that like yeah. if you're going to be doing these upper level competitions where you know from the belly of the jump to the lip is like 20 yards long yeah you know like you're going to have to put a turn in there somewhere yeah and then for pipe too you, you know, need you, some torsional stiffness in your skis yeah. if you're setting a switch double cork 1620 right off a 70 foot jump yeah whenever i do that i feel like i need right. that, that quality in my right ski. you're like oh that's yeah. just i you know i didn't have the, the pop <laughs> off the lip yeah. that i was looking for yeah. kind of washed out a little bit didn't let me lock my grab as yeah. well just the trick wasn't quite as dynamic you end up getting three instead of four rotations it's a real bummer no, that, that, that doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> I did know a guy once that would just start spinning and, see where and he just ended whatever up. he ended up with, yeah. he would land. And very good park skier. Um, it, was, it was always just impressive to me. I would be like, what were you going for there? And he would be like, oh, I don't know. I just started spinning. Yeah. Risky. Risky. Uh, <laughs> Spin <move>. Risky strategy. <laughs> <clears throat> um, this is the Vocal Revolt 95. So uh, we got, we have three vocals up here. Yeah. Three. And I'm pretty sure they make a couple other, like we could have even brought the Revolt 104 up here. Right. You know, um, among the three Revolts that we have up here, this one feels the most like an all mountain ski to me. Um, and it was always kind of designed and, and intended to be that way. So 449 here for price, very affordable price. I think it's gone up $50 in its existence. Which and, is crazy that they've only gone up that much and it's still... Yeah. A really great choice right I remember when it was launched and they were like no we're gonna make it 399 and we yeah. were like y you know you could sell the same amount at 499 <laughs> right? right and they were like yeah we've talked about that but we're gonna keep it 399 so I think that's really okay. cool um, so multi-layer wood core in this ski um, and a pretty even flex pattern you know another round flex pattern yep. much like that revolt 86 that we looked at before um, I will say that the, the tips and tails in this ski they're intended to be a little softer than underfoot and you see that in how how they mill the thickness of the core so see how flat that or how thin the tips and tails are there yeah um, and that's pretty much corresponding to the rocker profile in this ski so it's not like tremendous high splay but longer rocker than we've seen in anything so far yep. and one of one of the longest rocker profiles of anything up here um, and I skied this thing, gosh, like almost every day if I wasn't testing skis for here for at least one season. I think it was almost two full seasons. And I just really enjoyed doing everything on this ski. It feels very good in the park. You know, it's 95 underfoot. Um, so it's not the quickest thing in the world, but 
plenty of high level park skiers are skiing on things that are 9,500 foot or wider. Right. So aren't, there aren't many major limitations in the park. It actually carves really well. We get this extended side cut. So you get, even with that long rocker profile, you get good effective edge if you're yeah. laying the ski over. So that was always something that impressed us. And then I used to like ski trees on it too. My wife skis on this thing right. in the trees. She loves it. It's right. like her, you know, it's our family ski with the kids. Yeah. And she has a blast. It's super easy to maneuver. Yep. You know, like she likes it better when it's tuned on the groomers. I think that it's one of those skis where like you kind of need to keep it sharp if, yeah. you're, if you're expecting a lot of edge grip. Yeah. Um, but no, very versatile ski and a lot of people can enjoy it. You don't have to be a park skier. I will say that it still has that center mount point. It's not a symmetrical ski. Um, so this used to be like, not that we don't sell a lot of these now, but I think we used to sell more of I them. Think, yeah. Because sure. basically other companies have just come out with skis to compete against yeah. this. So there are more options now. But when the ski first came out and we were selling a ton of them, we did a lot of testing of like where to put the bindings. I always thought that three centimeters back was a nice sweet spot for an all mountain skier. I think, I think we did because my brother in law has a pair too, and I think we did five or six back for them. Okay, does it work? It yeah, it even almost looks forward to me at, at five, five or six, six, which would be about there. Yeah. Um, so there you go, some evidence <laughs> there. I personally wouldn't want to go further than three back. And I, when I owned this ski, I skied at dead true center. Yeah. And I still thought it did fine in the trees. It's just one of those things that if you're used to skiing a centered ski, it feels fine. Yeah. If you're not used to skiing a centered ski, it feels terrible. I thought they took, you know, the, the professional application of that a little bit too far with that mount point and not providing other options. Well, and I, yeah, that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah. And I do think that... I, it's surprising to me that they at least didn't add one more. Right. That would have been very easy. Because it's not a symmetrical ski. Exactly. So, yeah, it would have been easy for Vocal to put another line right there and call this one freestyle and call that one traditional or right. something. So, I don't know why they didn't do that, but <laughs> if you're looking for just a fun, affordable twin tip all mountain ski and you don't go in the park that much and you don't ski switch that much, don't feel like you have to mount at dead center. I don't know why they still haven't done it. You know, like four top sheets later. Right. Five, I think. A, yeah, whatever. I think this is the fifth line on it. I think this is the fifth one. But could not, be wrong. Someone can decisions. correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and just over 1,900 grams. Yeah. So a pretty sturdy ski. Too. Yep. A Helix 88 from Liberty. Psyched to have these Liberties in here. I we just the... watched Max Moffat's <clears throat> X Games highlights from last year's slope style. He got second on this ski. Liberty is one of those companies that I follow on Instagram because they have like good giveaways. Mm. Did and you win so, a Helix 88? I have never won anything. Mm. But you gotta get your wife to sign up. I know she wins she's all good at that things. stuff. But they always post these cool videos of Max Moffat doing cool stuff on the Helix 88. Yeah. And like I'm not like that familiar with him. And so like whenever I see those videos pop up, I'm like Whoa, that guy's good. You know, it just like catches me off guard. Yep. Like how good some of these people are. Um, so this is what he'd been skiing on for a long time. Uh, Liberty does a great job kind of blending an interesting use of materials. Uh, we've talked about bamboo kind of ad nauseum with the Origin and the Evolve series skis, and that carries into Helix as well. Uh, just a blend of bamboo and poplar, and then they do have carbon stringers that run through the center. But really, it's the camber that separates Helix from Origin a bit more. So they do have more camber underfoot and then less rocker in the tips and tail. So it's more of that traditional park shape. Uh, pretty light. You know, the bamboo Very keeps light. the weight yeah. down, 1,612 grams. But still strong. Yep, pretty strong. You know, thicker profile that we've talked about with these Liberties. And that makes it a nice, smooth feeling underfoot. But... You know, when you decamber it, there's really not a whole lot of tip rocker that jumps out at you, uh, nor tail. But definitely has that kind of traditional twin tip style for sure. Um, this is a perfectly symmetrical ski. Yeah, first so one. So 118, 88, 118. Yep. Um, they even have, but contrary to Vocal, their recommended line is back. So very interesting 
kind of differences between companies and how they're marketing their skis. Yeah, it's weird that a symmetrical ski wouldn't get a center mount line and an asymmetrical ski gets yeah, I mean, I'm just going to have line. to go ahead and disagree with that. <laughs> that's <fine. laughs> it's, I don't know. I, I, maybe that's the park purist deep yeah. down inside me. But if you've got a symmetrically shaped ski, I'm, I'm never going to tell somebody not to mount at true center. Right. That ski was designed to be mounted true center. You're in the center of the side cut. Yeah. But you can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, <laughs> still has that Liberty feel. Pretty soft in the flex. You know, again, you can feel the roundness. You know, we've kind of talked about that before, but uh, I think it especially comes true with that symmetrical build that it really just feels the same tip to tail. You yeah, know, when you flip it over, like the flex over, is identical. Identical. Yeah. Couldn't tell which way it is. Yep. Which is really cool. But nice to see that thicker sidewall. Really smooth, quiet underfoot. You know, a lot of these things that we loved about Liberty, uh, right into the Helix 88. Sidewalls um, play a, a big factor in park skis. Yep. If you can fit that much sidewall, and if you use the right material, it typically will increase durability for rails, yep. which is pretty big. Um, a lot of pipe skiers ski this ski really well. So it's interesting that, you know, they can build enough torsional stiffness into it yeah. That'll hold an edge through, through the flat bottom and up the icy wall of a half pipe. Um, but great ski, and and definitely one of those skis that at least I would put into more of a park focused yeah. category. You know, where Revolt ninety five, ski it anywhere. Bent ninety, ski it anywhere. Oblivion ninety four, ski it anywhere. Yeah. Helix eighty eight is designed for the park. Right. If you want to ski a Liberty ski everywhere, you can go get an Origin 96, mm -hmm. which I think would be a better choice. Yeah, yeah they're awesome. Um, and then same story with this ski. This is the line Tom Wallish Pro. So if you're not familiar with Tom Wallish, you're probably not a big fan of park skiing. Um, he's, you know, I wouldn't say he's the best of the best anymore, but for a long time he was the best of the best. And I think... Like a nice way to think about this ski and think about this discussion in general is when I talk about like a competition style ski, think about the way Tom Wallace skis. He's very precise. Um, you know, he, you don't often see him like landing in a butter or something like that, which is starting to become more of a thing. Right. Or like landing in a press and bouncing out of it into another press and then like keep spinning and pressing down the hill tom is more rodeo nine stomp right Ski switch away. rodeo yeah. dub 10 stomp um, and i think that's a good way to think about anything that we say is more of a competition style ski where when you think about like an armada b dog and phil casabon you know he did compete for a, a portion of his career but he's more known for buttering and like yeah. slow speed tricks and being creative and innovative and stuff like that. So if I talk about a ski that's buttery and smeary, think about the way that Phil Casabon skis. And those are probably like extremes, but I thought this was a good, good opportunity to bring that up. Um, so Tom Wallace Pro here, $499.95, same price as that Helix 88. Um, very simple build here. Uh, we actually see a very similar build and flex pattern when we get to that chronic. This is closer to a symmetrical ski. So we're only two millimeters off, 118 in the tip, 116 in the tail. So I don't, we, we kind of were joking about it before. I don't, that's so close to being symmetrical that I wonder why they didn't do that. And I can only imagine that they gave Tom a couple different shapes and were like, which one do you like the best? Yep. And he chose this one and that's the end of the story. Um, but a nice blend, you know, just that nice even flex pattern again, nice round flex. It's soft, so it's going to be playful and, and relatively forgiving. But Tom still goes pretty big on jumps, so you need that stability for the landing. Pretty darn lightweight, just in the middle of 1,600 grams there, about 1,670. This is the 171. Um, and, yeah, really cool ski. You know, I think there's... 
there's a, is a little bit of a step up in performance from like a K2 site to a line Tom Wallace Pro. Yeah. So if you're really serious about park skiing and you want to kind of move to the next step or, or maybe budget's not a huge issue for you, I think there's a lot to like about this Helix 88 and the Tom Wallace Pro here. Yeah, and this is another example of one of those skis that's half cap, cap underfoot, I'm sorry, half sidewall, yep. underfoot, cap and tips and tails. So even at 1,650 grams or whatever it was, lighter swing weight. You know, you're moving, you're putting more of the mass in the middle and just making it lighter and easier to maneuver uh, at the ends, which is, totally. you know, a, a big plus for a lot of park skiers. Yep. And it looks cool. I think that's a great graphic. I think it might be the yeah. best best graphic. I don't know. This bent 90 is pretty sweet. Yeah, that's fine. You can disagree. <laughs> I just like the neon. Yeah, no, I think that thing looks pretty sharp. And this is interesting transitioning from those two skis, two skis that felt really, really park specific. Yeah. Um, I don't think this necessarily feels park specific. No, I don't think so either. Um, but it is a great ski. You know, we were able to get on this thing pretty early last year, and it was pretty clear that there was a big range of applications for the Bent 90. Uh, whether you were, you know, committing to the park and using it there, or using it more like I have in an all mountain format. So while that Revolt 95 is like my wife's family ski, this is mine. And it's just so easy and fun to ski tight woods, moguls you know anything adventurous is just incredibly exhilarating and rewarding on this you can put it anywhere what happens when you guys get 90 underfoot 1630 grams with horizon tech and the tips and tails right it'll go anywhere it goes anywhere so fun um and yeah because it has that horizon tech then you know this is just a great floater for any width ski but even for 90. um you know get it out on trail and I kind of push through this a little bit at speed, but not a huge deal. And like, I understand that, like knowing yeah. a limitation of a ski and being able to adapt accordingly, I think is really important as well. Totally. So, you know, I'm not going out there and, you know, trying to arc huge GS turns on firm snow on this, uh, you know, but in the trees and in the bumps, I haven't found a whole lot better. You know, it's just a really great choice for true all mountain skiing. And if you want to go in the park, it's got the twin tip for that. So yep. nice and flexible in the in the tail. Uh, you know, the horizon combined with that little bit of rocker does make this thing pretty supple in the back end. Uh, you know, lighter swing weight again. You know, we do have that vertical sidewall underfoot. Uh, so, you know, for you, Jeff, like, I remember you saying that felt a little bit strange at first going into the park with this, especially after uh, something with a little bit more substance in the back. Just took me a little bit to get used to. Right. But, you know, I don't think, I think that's probably more of a personal thing than anything else. Yeah. Like, yeah, it just, yeah, I'm used to like really heavy skis. Yeah, and if was, you, if, well, weird. if you think about like the spinning force, exactly, you know, like the heavier it is on the ends, the more it's going to pull out and slow you down. Exactly. So you just kind of have to be ready for, you know, adjusting your own spin rate yep. to the to the weight of the ski. But it's not like you know we've looked at other skis that are very similar yep. weight. It's just we haven't looked at an Unleashed ninety eight with a pivot on it yet, right? Which is more in line with what I'm used to. Um, and yeah, you know, you said all those great things about being an all mountain ski. It is a directional shape, 118 in the tip, 109 in the tail. Um, you're still going to see people winning world cups on this ski right. this year. It is like still, it's the best park ski that Atomic makes unless you'd prefer the 100. Um, so it is plenty capable in the park. Um, something that happens is because it's directional and you actually get quite a bit more tip rocker than tail rocker, you kind of never really want to go true center on the mount. What's yours mount at? Zero? The furthest, the, whatever the furthest line back. Is. Minus four? Yeah. So you're at minus four, I'm at plus six, which is just funny to think about. Um, but even that plus six line is not quite true center. Yeah. And 
having put bindings there and skied them quite a bit, I wouldn't go further forward than that, but they still feel plenty balanced as a park yeah. ski. Um, and I'm really looking forward to skiing those skis more in the park this year. Yeah, I enjoy, I've enjoyed every day I've ever been out on them. Yep. Which is a, a nice compliment. Yep. Super fun. One thing I really like about them is when you're hiking, like jumps or rails or whatever, yeah. it's lighter. Yeah, they feel like nothing on your hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. I just get less <laughs> tired hiking around. Um, and then last ski on this side of the wall is the Head Oblivion 94 here. Um, so a nice ski to kind of piggyback off some of the conversations that we've been having where this Oblivion 94 really feels like a kind of competition style twin tip park ski. Yeah. This to me just feels like a fun all mountain ski. Yeah. It has like a way different personality, even though the build is very similar. I'm pretty sure we use the same exact wood in both of these skis. So it's more just the width and the shape. Um, we'll look at that shape in a little bit. But flex pattern in this ski is real nice and soft. Yeah, it's considerably different than the 84. It really is. Yeah. And that kind of, you know, going back to that conversation that we were just having about like butters and smears and presses and stuff, this ski has more willingness to do stuff like that rather than those really precise, responsive things. Yeah. Um, 1,800 grams in this ski, so... A little bit heavier than some, but still pretty darn lightweight. You know, this isn't going to feel heavy on your feet. And then the rocker profile in this ski is quite a bit more substantial, at least than that Oblivion 84, and I would say more substantial than a lot of things up here. So all that tip rocker up there combined with the width of this ski, and especially the fact that the tips are pretty wide, yeah. and it's actually like a really good <clears throat> soft snow ski, Really good in the trees, stuff like that. You know, you can see that extended extended side cut in the tail too there. So we're not like early taper quickness, but this ski still feels very playful and very agile to yeah. me. It doesn't feel as springy. Like this ski feels so poppy and energetic. This ski feels like damper and smoother yeah. to me and how it kind of just wiggles and surfs around. But I think it's a great ski. I was psyched when head kind of showed us both of these skis for the first time. Yeah, no, I think that longer effective edge does a, does a wonders for this thing. Um, and just the overall versatility, you know, you were adding to how it works well in the park, but I think that that flex and the width really kind of speak to the overall well-rounded nature and that all mountain profile. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really nice overall choice. You know, again, sidewall all the way around, full edge, you know, just a great, you know, high-end build for, you know, a 94 millimeter underfoot twin tip, which I think that we both agree is a really nice place to have a ski. You yeah, know? like practically everybody should just be on a 94 underfoot twin tip. Right. You can do anything. It's yeah. really impressive. Yeah. Um, and a, a slight jump up in price here. So we were 499 499 499 Now we're 549 yeah. here at this Oblivion 94. We got a poacher, K2 poacher, same price, 95 cent bump from the head. Uh, we've talked about this one in our mid-90s comparisons as being one of the sturdier of the twin tips. That's kind of why it falls into that all-mountain category, is it really harkens on that, that site there in terms of having that aspen wood core, the carbon boost in there, the triaxial uh, fiberglass braiding, and it really just makes for a sturdy and solid ski. I don't remember when we were back here, but did I call this a mini poacher? Maybe. Because this that's a great way to think about <laughs> these two skis. Is this is just a miniature version of the poacher. The biggest difference is in the splay. So yeah. poacher has a little bit more of that free ride splay to it, a little bit lower profile tip and tail, and a little bit more taper. So you know, less competition park shaped from a design standpoint, but that doesn't mean it doesn't excel in park. Uh, you know, like you were saying, skis on that wall are World Cup and Olympic podiums, like same with this. That is too, yep. You know, whether 100%. it's X Games or Olympics, like you see this ski. Yeah, he, Colby Stevenson Colby was Stevenson. my pick to win like yep. everything last year. I don't remember how many things he actually won, but... Still, if you're looking for kind of an opposite to 
these lighter swing weight 100%. tips and tails. That's yep. kind of where this poacher comes in uh, with that thick overall sidewall, full all the way around like we see in the site, um, but really sturdy. Definitely a stiffer flex than totally. what we've seen so far. Yeah, and 2,000 grams, so. Yep, heavy ski. There's a lot of ski there. And then definitely more of that K2 free ride rocker. Starts down here, lower profile tip. You know, with that length of the rocker, you're not seeing that dramatic splay in the tip or the tail. So really more of that free ride soft snow mentality. Uh, and I think at that point, it just comes down to preference. You know, if you're Kobe Stevenson and you know you like kind of that driftier feel, then you're gonna lean towards a poacher. And if you are someone else that wants something that's a little bit more exacting in the tips and tails, then you're gonna get something with less taper, you know, kind of similar to that head um, 94 there. So it's really an interesting difference in terms of how these skis are shaped and who they're appealing to. And I think that like, kind of an interesting difference between a pro model and like a general public ski. Yeah, no, you, that's an interesting way to think about it. You know, yeah. like Colby Stevenson can ski on this, but so can like my dad. You yeah. know, it's like a very big range of skiers. Like someone who's just interested in cruising around the mountain that wants something a little bit sturdy, yep. but easy to ski and fun to be on, then this is a great choice. You know, there's just a lot of all mountain application for this thing. Yep. But really I really cool. like appreciate and value that I get to see kind of the ski progression and the kids that I coach. Yep. And a lot of them, like they'll start over here in like K2 Reckoner 92. Yep. Like that's their first ski when they like start skiing with us or start being a park skier. And then you'll see them like move up to something yep. like a site or a honey badger. And then they get a little bigger. They get into their teenage years and they you know, they're like 150 pounds or heavier, and then they often yeah. often transition to that poacher, which just works really well for a, a bigger, stronger kid because they're going to be really hard on their equipment, and that's got to be like, it's got to be one of the most durable skis in the world. Yeah, it no, has I, to be. I agree, and it just feels like that in your hand for sure. Yep. A um, little different here, this Helix 98 from Liberty. So this is really telling a similar story um, to that Helix 88 over there, but this ski is not symmetrical. So 133 in the tip, 121 in the tail. Yeah. So it makes sense because if you're getting up into 98, you're probably not like, you know, it's 2022, I probably shouldn't say this. Some people would compete on a ski this wide. But, but you're probably not park specific. You're probably on not that park ski. specific, exactly. So it makes sense that it's a more, more uh, directional shape there. 1,900 grams, so pretty good mix of, yep. you know, it's not super, super light. Um, this shares that same recipe of poplar, bamboo, and carbon. And these skis are just very fun. You know, they're, they're just so snappy and poppy, that bamboo and the carbon. Um, what I really like about this ski is it, like, complements and contradicts the... Uh, the Origin 96 really well. Like they kind of have opposite feels where this one feels super springy and bouncy and that Origin feels more damp and, and smooth. Yeah, it is an int it's almost like the difference between like this Unleashed 98 and the Enforcer 100 in terms it's, of totally. like the rocker profile and how they're designed to feel. Yep. Um, there is a good amount of tip rocker in this ski, but if you put it next to a Genesis 96, you'd see a lot more yeah, in that Genesis. No, yeah, totally um, a different, different and, profile. And pretty much the same amount of tail rocker in the tail here. So, you know, if you're... This ski would almost fit better on the wall if it were down there next to the Black Ops like 98 yeah. and the Unleashed 98. Um, so perhaps a nod to the value here because we're still in that same... Uh, 549 price range yeah so pretty darn impressive that that liberty can build a ski that can compete with those more expensive skis kind of on the end of the wall there yeah but a lot of fun i actually don't i don't get nearly as many opportunities to ski these as a, as i would like yeah liberty I mean, often doesn't have them in their demo fleet and stuff like that but every time i ski them they're so fun yeah no they're busy pushing origins and evolves and yeah which makes the sense. helix just doesn't quite get that that top billing 
but that name's been around forever. Like you know. that's a Liberty wouldn't be where they are today without skis like the Helix and the Double Helix. So it's kind of cool that they keep the name yeah. going. Um, this is another important name. This is a Line Chronic. 100%, very important ski. Um, kind of a, a mix between the blend, which we don't have up here right now, and kind of that Wallish. Um, yeah. So the Flex is decidedly blend. Yeah, it's similar to this ski, though. I was flexing them back and forth, and I'd say, like, it's right in between. Like, I'm going to, you know, I always like doing this with the blend. It's just, like, stepping on the tail. Flatten the tail. And trying to flatten it, and you can pretty much do it. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a nod to the thinner profile throughout the tips and the tails combined with that sidewall underfoot. So at 95 millimeters underfoot, you know, this ski is a mix between that competition park ski and a really fun all-mountain one. Um, really great choice for someone who's spending time in the park. Let me keep that there for a second. Uh, but not all of it. 1,860 grams. So mid to mid-heavy, I would say. And most of that weight is really coming in the underfoot zone. But this skier is definitely spending a lot of time in the park, but yeah. also wants to use it in an all-mountain format. Yep, and like very playful skiing style too. Yeah. Soft tips and tails, you like to butter and smear and stuff like that. Um, certainly not, you know, to kind of speak to that like competition style. Like it, it definitely has a different feel when you're on a Chronic than when you're on a Tom Wallish Pro. And even some line blade optic notes coming through here where the sidewall is stopping where the rocker begins. So we see that with the Blade Optic Series skis, uh, and actually kind of the taper goes along with that too, for the most part. But same in the tail, that rocker starts right about where that sidewall ends. So they're really putting a lot of emphasis on the camber and the performance underfoot, yeah. as well as the playfulness in the tips and tails. Totally. But, you know, like we said with that, 90, that Oblivion 94, like everyone should have a mid-90s twin tip and... Who could make an argument for this, especially on the playful and fun-loving side? But really great, really great choice. You know, we get a lot of, lot of requests for, for this thing um, and happy to oblige. You know, definitely has more of that mix of, of rocker and splay versus something a little bit more, you know, helix or sight oriented with that true, true symmetry in the tail, but really yeah. a good, really a nice blend of things. Yeah, and I feel like I should know this, but I wonder if it's the best-selling line ski. I hear, I mean, I, feel like I hear a, the most about it. There's a good chance it, yeah. it is. Um, it's been around for a long time, and yeah, it's, it's just highly versatile. And we get a lot of questions, kind of people deciding between poachers and chronics and this ski. Yep. Um, and I always find that to be an interesting conversation. Um, I don't maybe I don't I'm curious if you agree with me but in in kind of the those three skis I always felt like this one was kind of right in the middle. Yeah, I would say it leans more to here for sure. Yeah, I think um, that's fair. But yeah, I would I would say it's middle but upper middle. Yeah. So less than 1800 grams here. So at considerably lighter than a poacher, um, but a pretty strong flex pattern in the ARV96. Yeah. Um, and where Armada makes, because I didn't get any Armadas over here, did I? No, they're all really expensive, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, they make narrower skis. We didn't have, have the uh, 86, 86 up here. Yeah. That would have been a really fun one to include, but we just didn't have it in the warehouse. Um, but where some Armada skis are more focused for specific things, and we are going to talk about that when we get to the B-Dog and the Idolo over there, I'd say the ARV is just designed for versatility and fun. Yeah. There's certainly no reason why you couldn't compete on this ski. In fact, it kind of blends like a lot of the things that we were saying about these more competition focused skis with more playful skis. And you see that in the shape. So a tremendous amount of camber underfoot might yeah. win the gold medal for <laughs> camber height. So you're going to get a lot of pop, a lot of energy out of the ski but then you pretty much get symmetrical amounts of tip and tail rocker. And it's not like long rocker like we've seen in some of these skis, but it's certainly enough to be 
a noticeable amount of rocker when you're skiing right. it. So this ski has just got an excellent blend of feeling pretty light, pretty agile, easy to flick around, doesn't feel locked into a turn, but then you get a, quite a bit of edge grip. You get quite a lot of responsiveness and pop and energy. So if you're ollieing onto a rail, it's going to feel great. If you're landing a big jump, you know, if you're going deep in the landing, it's got enough camber and, and a strong enough flex underfoot there that it's not going to wash out on you. So very well-rounded ski, whether you're skiing it as an all-mountain ski or as a park ski. I think it's just, there's a lot to like here. And you kind of get a nod to the, the different ways you could use it with this freestyle mount point there and then a factory recommended mount point that's quite directional. In yeah. fact, I don't know what the difference there is. It's got to be... Eight to eight, ten centimeters. Eight centimeters back. <laughs> so, you know, it is, it's not just a symmetrical right. twin tip park ski. There's a lot of stuff you can do on this. And like I've seen you ski trees on this ski and you had a blast. I mean, have you ever had a bad time on, on an ARV 96? No, no, exactly. Just a fun ski. Yeah. You take anywhere on the mountain. Cool what they do with the sidewall too. It's their AR 75. Yep. So 75% sidewall in the middle. Even that center portion gets beefed up. But again, you're going from true cap, to half sidewall to full sidewall and back. So Yeah, and we were having fun kind of looking at that. I think it's more over on your side of the wall. You gotta spend a little more money to get kind of that that cool innovative mix of, of side or of uh, sidewalls. But we basically see the same exact thing in this ski. And yeah. I just thought that was very interesting. No, this is the one that we were talking about that has that mix. Um, so Vocals uh, Revolt 90 is new for this year, yeah. really their competition park, uh, competition focused park ski, uh, does a really nice job of taking that light swing weight wood core. Um, again, like that ARV, we got that full sidewall underfoot, tapering to cap, but there's this kind of secondary or tertiary sidewall that's below the green above the edge that's just another layer of strength and durability there. So that's giving sophistication to the build. That along with the new mold and the shaping, that's gonna, you know, that's gonna cost you a little bit. Uh, $599.95, so $50 jump. Uh, but you're getting top level performance out of this thing. Uh, symmetrical, really cool how they do that. And then they also are adding that taper into it. So this is where that modern freestyle shape starts to come into the fold here. Uh, really just offering that better, smoother entry and exit into jumps and tricks. And, you know, we've seen that it works pretty well. I think it, that it just makes sense from a visual perspective too. So much sense. Um, that, you know, especially I think for takeoffs and landings, yep. that, you're, that there's more of like that smeary, style just, a, just enough yeah yeah there's like just enough in this ski versus that fully fully you know non-tapered right. or, or this shape yeah or even like <clears throat> to stick within vocal right you know you see that the difference in the tip shape there and i think it'll be interesting to see like the preference among vocal athletes like yeah. i think you're going to see vocal sponsored athletes choose both of these skis right. depending on kind of what they're <laughs> used to um yeah, Vocal brought us out to Sun Valley to see mostly the new Kendo and the Mantra 102. That was like the purpose of the trip. And they did a whole like presentation of their new skis and spent like a couple hours talking about Kendos and Mantras. And then the presentation ended and I raised my hand and pointed to this and was like, you haven't talked yeah, about what's that, that? Yet. <laughs> <laughs> And that's because this ski really caught my eye the first time I saw it. And I think... Like, I think this is the pinnacle of modern competition park ski, yeah. which makes sense because Vocal sponsors a lot of competition focused skis or skiers, Andrea Getley, Nick Gepper, like they all, they have their focus as park skiers is their competitions. Yeah. So it makes sense that Vocal kind of like developed a ski that works really well for those skiers. This replaces that Revolt 87 mm -hmm. that had more of a shape like this Revolt 86 over here, more extended side cut. I think they retained enough precision in this ski, but they added in, like Bob was saying, just a touch of 
kind of like forgiveness. And yeah. I think like the, the biggest thing that I get excited about when I see this tip shape and just a straighter cut here and a little more rocker is switch takeoffs. Cause it just, it, it makes you less prone to catch, catch that tip on your takeoff. So switch takeoffs are kind of all about timing and patience and letting your tips clear before you start your spin. If you go a little early, which is kind of the tendency for most park skiers because you're, you know, coming into a big jump switch and you're just like, all right, I want to do, do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. If you start a little early, this is less prone yeah. to catch and catching a tip on a switch takeoff on a big jump is, it's got to be my least favorite feeling on skis, period. It's terif terrifying. More than overshooting? <sighs> yeah. Even yeah. knowing you're overshooting? Yep. Okay. Yep. If I know I'm overshooting, I can put a strategy <laughs> together and like figure out which part of my body I want to injure. If you catch a tip on a switch takeoff. It's out of your control. It's out yeah. of your control. You're just, you're along for the ride and, yeah. and physics are deciding where you go and what you land on. So but, I just think I got really excited when they <laughs> showed me that ski and, and the shape. And sturdy too, you know, yep. this is... It needs to be. It, yeah, it needs to be nice and sturdy underfoot, especially a little bit lighter in the tips and tails. It is interesting that like the materials aren't too much different in that ski compared right. to this ski and the price goes up a lot. They just move the materials around. Well, and I think like there's also more technology in how that thing's pressed right. together with all those different elements to the sidewall and stuff like that. Yeah. I just, putting this wall together, I thought it was interesting that that ski hits a $200, like $200 difference in price right. point. Just, I don't know, those are the things I think about it. Uh, we got another Armada. This is the B-Dog, uh, Phil Casabon's Pro Model Ski. Really interesting, kind of when you, I, I feel like this more than anything is like athlete designed. Yeah, these next like two. The next yeah. two, but yep. he, like this insofar as that it's kind of a, a, a very outside of the box shape that they wouldn't just make this ski if someone didn't say, I want my ski to be like that. Not quite, no. I feel like I could argue with you if I wanted to. But I'm not going to. But like Reckoner 102 is like a kind of similar shape and right. concept. But they it's exaggerated in this ski. And I'll let Bob explain kind of what makes this ski special. Uh, the taper makes this ski special, Jeff. And it's uh, straight. And it's straight. And that's what... So like it's hard to kind of tell from where you're at. But basically from where my fingers are in the shovel, it's straight. Yeah. So it's very cool. there's a rounded tip, straight... And then we get into a pretty dramatic side cut. Yeah, what, 15 meter radius? I think, yeah, 15 or less. Yeah, 15. Um, and then same theory on the end. So straight back here. And really this is what the design was to do was to basically have this thing be smooth on the ground. So yeah, when you're right. flexing and pressing into the snow, it's not going to want to turn. Turn. Exactly. It's going to want to just drift and go straight, exactly. and you're able to pilot it here. Like, who skis a ski uh, here? Some people are able to pilot it, yes. <laughs> you know, like, that's a really unique thing about this. Which is, is that... Yep, and it's a modern thing. Yeah. But, yeah, you know, you're getting pressed up on that portion of the ski and holding it and right. controlling where you're going. Which is super impressive. Very impressive. Like, when you see it, you know... I, I wouldn't say I've seen it in real life, but in... No, you don't see much film, of that at Stowe. Yeah. On film, it's really pretty cool. And good heft to this thing, too, huh? Like, definitely feels this... I mean, all, all of the Armadas, you know, they, they're using ash in the wood core of these, so it does yep. add that density to it. So we're just under 2,000 grams here, uh, and we also have that sidewall underfoot, and that's... Eh, ends almost where it gets pretty straight, but just a little bit between that step down sidewall. Again, kind of three levels of sidewall, cap, half cap, and full sidewall underfoot. So yeah. really kind of mixing the flex and performance from tip to tail. So it's something that I think is cool about this ski is it can be like a really progressive tool for the best park skiers in the world. 
somebody like Phil Casabon or somebody who's doing those long, drawn-out, pressy yeah. things, because of this shape, because there's so much rocker and taper and a short, effective edge, it's actually like a kind of a nice stepping stone ski too. Right. If you're like an intermediate and you want a wider part ski and, and you don't want something that's too demanding, I think the B-Dog would be a lot of fun for a yep. skier like that. Um, I, I just want to try this. If we put the tips together, look at that. It's just straight. Yeah. It's very it's cool. Very interesting. I don't think there's any other ski in the world that you can no. do that, and it's just going to make a straight, even contact right. between the edges. But, yeah, really cool. Also, you know, just a very similar kind of feel, you know, in your hands, these Armadas. Yep. Uh, that continues on to Idolo as well. Yeah, so... That being Phil Casabon's pro model, uh, this is Henrik Harlow's pro model, and if we skip the price on the B Dog, it is five ninety nine ninety five. This ski goes up to six forty nine ninety five. Basically the same exact build. So Bob and I were kind of um, making guesses about why this is fifty dollars more, and my guess was because Henrik Harlow drives more sales than Phil Casabon. That he gets paid more. <laughs> Or at least they like sell more of them. I right. don't know. That was just a guess. But if you're familiar with Henrik Harlow, um, you know he's he's just as much a household name as Tom Wallace, even more so yeah. now because he's still a, a current current skier. You're still going to see him competing and put out putting out movie parts and stuff like that. Henrik is known for. I mean, I guess Henrik is known for how much he just loves skiing more than anything else. He's just always got a smile on his face and do just will do anything. Yeah. So this ski, being his pro model, it kind of has to be able to do a little bit of everything. It is wider. It's 98 underfoot. We don't get that taper in the tips and tails, but we do get a lot of rocker in this ski. And this ski will land 100-foot jumps, you know, like has enough stability for that kind of stuff and then Henrik can take it into the streets or he can take it into his snow park by Henrik Harlow and Gran Valara <laughs> Andorra um, and just do some like kind of low speed jibby things. Henrik put out a bunch of videos recently where he wasn't even skiing. He was clipped into his skis like in on his deck or something and he was just like practicing his nollies and then like landing in a tail press on a rail and then like popping out just on the ground it just makes my toes and heels hurt just watching that stuff yeah well you're not henry carlo built the same you and you are you and henry carlo are not <laughs> built the same no so this ski is designed for all of those things it has enough stability underfoot to land those landings it has enough playfulness in the tips and tails here that henrik can butter it and press it I will say that this is a slightly more demanding ski than something like the B-Dog, particularly yeah. for those presses and those butters. And we were kind of clicking around on Armada's site and listened to Phil and Henrik talking about their skis, and it was interesting to hear Henrik just speak so highly of his ski here, but also mentioning that he likes to get on the B-Dog when yeah. he wants to be even more playful. Right. So I thought that was really cool. Um, but the... Idolo, you know, you're going to see a lot of these on the mountain. A lot of that is due to the popularity of Henrik as a, a person and as a skier. A lot of it is due to the versatility of the ski, like I was just describing. You can do a whole bunch of different things on them. Like we said, basically the same build as that B-Dog, basically the same weight. Yeah. 1,950 grams here, but we go a little wider. So yeah. it makes sense that it would be marginally heavier. Yeah, three-step uh, sidewall here as well. Yep. And really same style. Like you were saying, more rocker, you know, it's just a flatter overall profile. Yeah, but cool that like dramatic. they build the softer flex into the tips and tails yep. and the thinner profile, but you also get extended tips and tails. Yeah. So kind of like, I don't even remember where we were, kind of talking about like hybrid of like competitive skiing and, and swervy, playful skiing is like, that's one way to do it is right. make the tips still extended side cut, but make them soft. Yep. Really fun. Again, Armada quality just sings through on this one. Uh, kind of moving more into All Mountain Freeride, I guess, with this Captus. I think so. I think these um, last five skis were moving a little bit further away, especially after a B-Dog and an E-Dolo. Right. It doesn't feel like we're in B-Dog and E-Dolo world anymore. 
if you're a park skier and you walk into a shop and you say, I want to buy a park ski and they sell you this, have they done you a disservice? No. Yeah. In, in, no, I would say that salesperson's just really good. <laughs> <laughs> that they can convince a young park skier to get a Black Crows rather than an Armada Idolo. Yeah, I think part of that is marketing. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, there's not a pro skier that's featured in numerous outlets on this thing doing park stuff. Um, but part of it is it's more of a traditional all-mountain ski. Um, kind of a narrower version of their address. Uh, really, really fun, poplar wood core, fiberglass laminate, not a whole lot of crazy stuff going on, uh, but they just make it really poppy and energetic. 1,720 yeah. grams, pretty stiff. Yeah, totally. You know, like not, not a flimsy ski at all. It's Black Crow's quality. Yeah, for sure. And we are seeing that a little bit in the price, 649.95. Right, so same price as that Idolo, but no royalties are going to the pro pro skier. Right. Mm, where's it going then? To Black Crows. Black Crows. <laughs> the theory that the concept that I'm presenting here, Bob, is that more goes into the build of the ski. I just wonder who gets paid. They're just padding their margins. Yeah. Lots of good camber in this one. You know, there is rocker. Definitely more of that free ride rocker, free ride twin tip shape. Lower profile in the tail. Uh, and, you know, that's by design, partly to make it accessible in the park, but also to increase that all-mountain versatility. Yep. So 90 millimeters underfoot, 18-meter turn radius, full sidewall throughout. You know, that's another thing kind of differentiating it uh, from these previous few skis, especially these Armadas that, you know, distinguish between those three different levels of sidewall, this is certainly more of that traditional sandwich sidewall construction. 100%, yeah. Um, and, you know, for my mind, with the that bent 90 in that 90 millimeter range. I think that's a great comparison. Really one of the best comparisons. Um, this has, I would say, more energy, more pop, more snap. Uh, not quite as drifty or floaty as the bent, but definitely a different energy overall. Yeah. So if you're kind of looking for that more poppy ski, just that has that snap and flex built into it, I think that this makes a fantastic choice. Um, but similar to that bent, you know, one of the better tree and bump skis on this wall for sure. Yeah. Really quick, really agile. Totally, but like supportive and pretty yep. strong too. It's a high quality ski yeah. and it's got a, a really nice mix of feeling quick and agile. Like I was doing all those little playful things over the yep. rollers at Waterville and it like did that just fine. Right. But then like it can, can carve pretty well too. And like you said, it's a fantastic mogul and tree ski. Yeah. So it's and more of a playful all mountain ski than a, than a park ski. So somewhat of an outlier on this wall, but such a fun ski. Yeah. I don't think it would affect the performance too much if they went, you know, to more of a flat, even a flatter tail. Right. You know, like that would, it would be a very much a directional ski almost kind of like the Virtus that Black Crows makes. Yes. Just a little bit wider. That's an, uh, that's an interesting point. That's probably the most similar ski, or maybe Camex. Yeah. I don't know if Camex or Vertis would be more similar, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And I agree 100% that they could make the tail flatter and, and still kind of accomplish the purpose of that ski. Yeah, just the overall personality would remain pretty similar. And speaking of just like personality and feel, does this feel like an opposite to that to you? Because uh, it does to me. Like on the drama scale, yes. I feel like this ski rates very high on the drama scale. I'm like not in, sure what that means. It has, but a, I like it, it has a dramatic profile and personality to it. You know, like just like very like yeah, very <laughs> flowy and just really kind of out there, which is part of, which is like the charm. Totally. This ski feels a lot different to me than the Captus. Um, most of that's coming from the amount of tip and tail rocker in this ski. So, like, that's a crazy amount of tip rocker. Yeah. It is 99 underfoot. You know, this is this shape is kind of more derived from the M Free 108 than right. anything else because that ski came out first, and then we got this one. And there's pretty much the same amount of tail rocker back there. So that's kind of what I was thinking of in comparison to the Captus yep. is this ski is very loose and smeary in how it just kind of like wanders and maneuvers around the mountain. 
it does not feel nearly as precise as that captus. It's just, it's just a different animal, more yeah. surfy here. Um, but we get that hybrid PU construction in this ski, so a wood core, and then they use some polyurethane too. So although it has that just, what do you call it, mustache, mustachio, mustachio shape profile to it. I would it, say yeah. that describes this ski pretty well. Yep. Although it has that, it's actually like pretty pretty strong and pretty smooth. Whenever I ski this ski, I'm, I'm reminded and, and kind of impressed by how good it feels up on a high edge angle and in a carve, but then you can dance around on it and play too. Yep. And it's a lot different than that Menace 98. We talked about that yeah, ski. Yeah, way different. Yeah. Right, and way we'll, different we'll than talk about it in one. the next ski. Yeah. Um, but I kind of like that Dina Star is moving in that direction for this style ski. I think it still accomplishes everything that that did. It just, it feels more modern. It's better in the right. trees. It's better in soft snow. It's better for those buttery, pressy, smeary tricks and stuff like that. So I think there's a lot to like about this ski. Um, interested on your take it, it it feels like one of those things that might work better for a lighter skier like myself uh my yeah my big complaint is that it skis short so yeah, exactly. even in the 185 it's it's short and right. um i you know like they have the 108 that comes in the 192 like for me, I would love this thing in a 192. Right, but and it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And I don't, and interestingly, I feel like the 108 in the 182 is fine. Yep. But this in the 185. Uh, less mass. Feels short. A little narrower. Yeah. Um, but, but that's it. But, I, but like you said, for the trees, for soft snow, you know, not a whole lot better on this wall and in yep. that 99 range. It's just very smeary yep. and fun. Yeah. Um, just over 1,800 grams, so yeah. not too, too light. I think for a ski that's 99 underfoot, it's on the lighter side, but with that hybrid PU construction, you still get the necessary heft here yeah. and strength that it's not just going to feel like a noodle. Yeah, I think no. you could look at this shape and be like, meh, noodle, but it's far from that, in my opinion. Nope, great energy for sure. Uh, and this was five six ninety nine ninety five. Yep. We got to do a Bob. little little switcheroo here. We didn't do this before. Oh sure, there you go. Yeah, good work. There. Uh, same price. Um, Nordica Unleashed ninety eight. Um, really, really psyched to see this thing come in, even with the disappearance of the Soul Rider ninety seven. I forgot about the Soul Rider pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and I, I think that kind of similar to the M Menace 90 and the Reckoner 92, this also has the Unleashed 90. Which is way different. Way different. It's in the same way that those are. That those are different from their wider yep. skis. Yep. And I think that, like, I was a little bit disappointed, especially with this one, that they didn't make the Just 90 make the, yeah. like this. Come on, Nordica. So, you know, the, the main difference is the metal laminate and the length options. I really like when, when manufacturers like put a lot of technology into their narrower skis. Right. Like just build them like the wider ones. Right. And in similar lengths as the wider yeah. ones. Or like, I don't care, make it different. Give me an Unleashed 88 right. with terrain specific metal. I think that'd be really cool. Yep. I Maybe agree. I'm asking for too much now. You can ask. They can say no. Yeah. But you can up, ask. They, they, they're the ones who make the skis. <laughs> Not up to me. But basically what they did was they took that um, Soul Rider 97 shape, that twin tip shape, and put a Santa Ana build into it. So we're dealing with that wood core and one sheet of terrain specific metal. So full width uh, in the shovel and in the tail, and then they mill out sections in the mid body. And that just makes it a little bit lighter, more agile, uh, especially in the underfoot zone. Uh, pretty darn damp in the tips and tails. Totally. You know, it's still not, I would even say it's not the stiffest ski on the wall here, uh, but it has the right amount of stiffness. No, will you flex that again? I bet this is stiffer. <laughs> it's I mean, got to be close. Pretty or close. If that's not, here, we'll have you do it for consistency. Okay. So give that another flex. Is Oblivion 79 stiffer? Slightly. There you go. So flex isn't everything. 
Definitely has a lot to do with the dampness and stability, uh, having that metal in here and keeping those vibrations down. Um, but what we always liked about the Soul Rider was how well it worked both in a park capacity and in an all-mountain free ride one. So Santa Ana build, pretty sturdy construction for a ski. You know, definitely that high-level ladies ski, really just a shade under Enforcer. Where they changed Unleashed was in the profile. Yeah. So whereas Enforcer had has more longer rocker and less dramatic splay, they really just bumped the camber up, made the rocker shorter, and made the splay a little bit more freestyle oriented. Yeah, kind of like a blend of Soul Rider and, and Enforcer shapes, because yeah. there's a little more rocker in that ski than Soul Rider. Yeah, Soul Rider's tail was a lot more kind of sight like. Yep. Uh, whereas this is, you know, that rocker extends down more. It's not as dramatic of a splay in the tail, but still very much a freestyle twin tip in there. But nice camber underfoot. And at 98 millimeters underfoot, really getting some excellent versatility out of this thing. I mean, any day, any terrain, this is a fantastic option. Just over 1,800 grams here. Is this the 170? This is 174. Yes. Um, so, you know, a good blend of weight and performance. Uh, you know, you skied yours in the park a lot. Uh, I, had, I had a pair that I skied on a nice, like, 8-inch powder day. Yep. Worked really well for me. Yep. And it seems like you really enjoy it in the park, too. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I don't have as like specific demands in the park as I used to, and yeah. like, you know, not doing any. I probably won't do a 1080 this year. I don't think I did one last year. So like bigger spins like that, I don't really do them anymore. Yeah. Even like 900s, I don't. Used to be my favorite trick, and now I don't. I don't. I'll probably do 20 or 30 of them this upcoming season, but it's not like I'm doing going to do two or 300 of them. So I really like that ski because it feels strong and, and capable as an all-mountain ski yeah. and still lets me feel right at home and do the things that I personally want to do in the park. Yeah. I also, it just like makes really clean round turns. Yeah, I agree. I don't I'm, know what it is about that ski, but it just... Well, it's the it's long nice effective arc. edge. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have as much rocker, so you're getting right. more edge contact with the snow. Yeah, and like no no taper too, so like this portion of the ski really like right. interacts with the snow and kind of pulls you into a turn in a nice way. Yeah. Yeah, they're just they're they're a lot of fun. Nope, zero negative things to say about the Unleash 98. That's No, for sure. I guess if you had to push and like ask for a negative thing, which no one did, so I could just skip this. Okay. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I would say like it, it has some limitations as a park ski for ability level. Like I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want a beginner or intermediate level park skier to ski an Unleashed 98 because right. I think they would kind of have some trouble with it. In the same sense that I wouldn't want a beginner or intermediate park skier to ski this thing in the park. But that's what that side of the wall is for. Exactly. You asked for a down. You didn't ask for anything. <laughs> I provided it um, unsolicited. So this is the Rosignol Black Ops 98, which, like, I think it would be somewhat fair to say that this ski kind of inspired the Unleashed 98. Yep. Because this ski has been out for a while now. Um, it's gone through a few name changes. It was Black Ops 98, then it was Holy Shred, now it's back to Black Ops 98. But I think this ski has at least opened the eyes of some other manufacturers of, like, Look how good we can make these skis, and look how many people like them. Yeah. Like I just, I feel like every time we go to an on snow demo event somewhere with a bunch of different companies, like a bunch of different retailers and stuff like that, you see so many people skiing those and having a really good time. Yep. And then like you'll talk to the reps, and they'll be like, everyone seems to love the Black Ops 98. It's like, well, yeah. Right. It's a twin tip that's 98 underfoot. Like, of course you're gonna like it. But great ski. So. Just under 1,800 grams, or maybe closer to 1,850 grams here in the 172. I will say that in the longer lengths, this ski starts to feel pretty heavy. Yep. So wood core in this ski, and then we get rubber in the tips and tails, and we also get some metal underfoot, bumping up to 749.95. So we're in more of a price point here that's going up against like like mantras and right. stuff like that and enforcers so it makes sense that this ski is 
at least has the performance to kind of go up against those skis, and it, it does. This ski feels strong and stable and damp when you're skiing it fast. You can, like, I, I wouldn't, I've never found a speed limit on this ski. No, it's great. It cruises right along. Absolutely. So super fun for aggressive high speed skiers, but then it's got a nice playful flex pattern. It's got a lot of, not a lot, but it's got the necessary amount of tip and tail rocker to feel pretty loose and agile. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. I will say that like, I probably wouldn't really even recommend this as a, as a park ski. Like it's one of those things that if you're shopping for a park ski and you have to ask our advice, this probably isn't for you. Right. If you're a really strong skier and you've been doing your thing for a while, this could be a great park ski. It's just, you kind of have to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. But great as an all mountain ski, great on groomers, great in the trees, good amount of float. Yep. Fun ski. And we see Black Ops 92, kind of similar to how we were talking about Reckoner, Menace. What's the other one? I forget. This one, or. Yeah. You, but yeah, different build, you know, the lighter, the 92 is a Polonia wood core. It's got well, a Well, and I wanted binding. to put the 92 in here, but it's got like such a flat tail that it almost yeah. doesn't like look like a twin tip anymore. No, it's, it's interesting that that's a difference between this and the 92. Yeah. Less of a twin tip. Yeah. And that even like surprised me. Right. I just kind of thought they were the same shape, but narrower. Yeah. But that, that does have a flatter tail, which I suppose, like, I almost lost it there. I suppose kind of makes sense, because if you look at the difference in this splay to tail, yeah. there is, this ski does have a flatter tail than tip, but it's even more pronounced on that 92. Yeah. But awesome ski, really, really good for an aggressive all-mountain skier that wants a twin tip. And we get a lot of questions about this versus Unleashed. Yep. Uh, you know, similar overall application. Yeah, one's just damp and one's more responsive. Yeah, this one's just a little bit more energetic than yep. the Unleashed. Yeah. Oh, do I have to talk about this one now? I can talk about that one. We can talk about it together. The mirror score is great. Yeah, this Black Crow's awesome. mirror score. <clears throat> um, if you walked into a ski shop and asked for a terrain park specific ski and you were sold this, would you have been done a disservice? No, and once again, <laughs> that salesperson is really good at their job. Because you just spent $900 right. before bindings. Yep. No, I think this is a really interesting one and definitely the most unique ski on the wall. Definitely. Um, you know, they combine a 13 meter turn radius with a lizard tongue tail and a symmetrical rocker profile. Mini swallow tail back here. Yeah. It's very strange. Very strange. Very interesting. We do get a metal plate underfoot, so it is pretty rigid under there. Um, and just a really unique blend of, you know, a fun-loving personality, that short carving style uh, with that twin tip profile. It's a really interesting mix of things. Yeah, and we had this ski in, I believe, our 90 millimeter ski comparison. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter what you compare it against. It is very unique. Yep. So we do have that, you know, kind of long but low rocker, low profile. Uh, that taper drops down a little bit, but pretty pretty wide shovel, very interesting shape as well. And then very similar looking in the profile. And if you had just connected this, it would look eerily similar to the tip. Yep. So you just make those nice clean round turns, uh, pretty flat underfoot. So interesting in soft snow, it'll stay on top, float pretty well. And then on groomers, uh, carves pretty clean. So 87 underfoot, 13 meter radius. Different, uh, different stats than we see from these other skis. Totally. I've, I've skied these quite a bit. I think I was like the first person in our company to ski them, actually. Um, I, I really want to get a pair. Yep. I really want to get a pair and put my own bindings on them and ski them in the park a lot. Because I'm really curious what that would be like. And I've kind of like skied them through the park, but I've always been on a ski that belongs to a manufacturer, so I'm not like right. sliding rails and stuff like that, and at least a little bit careful of, of what I do to the ski. But I just can't help but think, and I've brought this up before in other videos, that this is like a glimpse into the future. Yeah, that was, that was my take in the written section was like, is this where 
twin tips are going. I think some twin tips. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just so much fun. Yeah. And people are kind of like, beyond park skiers, it just feels like skiers in general and the industry in general is like, we're like making this, and I don't even know if it's a circle. I don't think circle is the right shape. But it feels like people are valuing, like, the feeling of carving and, like, lateral acceleration more than just, like, whoa, dude, you were skiing really fast. Right. Like, it felt like we were in this world of just, like, speed for a while and, like, how fast you were going straight down the fall line. And now people are coming coming back to, like, now actually just, like, making these cool dynamic turns is, like, a way more rewarding feel than just skiing 60 miles an hour straight well you're talking about a parabola in both in both areas in the in terms of the industry and in terms of your turn shape sure yeah so yeah no, it's not a circle it's a parabola because okay. it's a line yep but it goes up and down sure and it's making those sharp it's we're in a turn at this point we're at the peak of a parabola we're at or a you're 13 thinking... meter apex radius but where are we in the parabola of the industry Right in the middle? No, we're at the top because we're at the steepest part of the turn shape. I'm, I lost you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know what you're saying. I think I like it. Um, but, no, I do think that people, there are more and more people kind of seeking the feeling and the reward that this ski provides. Yeah. And there's almost nothing else that does that. Like line blade is kind of the other ski. Right. Where people, you can make like super high edge angle turns, like brush your hip against the snow and then go slide rails. Right. And I think we, we both are in agreement that we're happy to live in a world where a ski like this exists. Yeah, very Which happy. I think is kind of the biggest selling point. For totally. Sure. Yep. And I know, like, even just talking to Black Crows, like, people at Black Crows really like this ski yep. and they think they have something here. And I feel like since it came out, it's just kind of been this, like, gimmicky thing. At least that's how people compartmentalize it. Yeah. Um, but... I know that Black Crows is going to put more emphasis on this ski this year, and I wonder if we're going to start seeing more and more of them. Yep. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, and we get a lot of traction on this in comments and comparisons, for sure. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's it. That felt a little different to me than our normal ski comparisons. Which is funny, because a lot of these skis we've done before. Yep. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think we kind of took a different approach to it this yep. year. We don't normally talk about things through the lens of park skiing, and it felt like most of this video was kind of talking about park skiing. Yeah. So if you have any questions, you know, if you're curious about whether these skis would work for you if you're not a park skier or something like that, feel free to leave a comment as always. Um, and we've got a couple more 2023 ski comparisons, and then we'll be skiing. Doing skiing things. Yeah. Should be nice. Got to get a pair of those Miras cores. <laughs> what else? What else do it? You know, I think it'd be like awesome if we could do like a long, a long form review and test of like a B dog. Yeah. Like see all the different things that that can do. And it, can it do things that like Phil doesn't do on it? Like I just think that'd be fun. I, my guess is that we would be very happy skiing on either of these. Yeah. For a long, yeah, and I've, long I've, range. Yeah. I've like, I've skied them you know on groomer days and stuff like yeah. that i probably bopped off some side hits on them and stuff things like that but yeah. love to ski some steeper terrain see what they can do yep so look out for a couple more 2023 ski comparisons let us know if you have any questions and we'll talk to you soon bye